Hello, everyone, and welcome to AEW Dark. I'm Excalibur, joined, as always, by the human suplex machine, Taz. And Taz, we are just over 24 hours away from the Crossroads edition of Dynamite. Shaquille O'Neal will be in action tomorrow night. I'm actually looking forward very much to watching Shaq himself take the head of Cody Rhodes and crush it. <laughs> But not only that, we are just days away from AEW's revolution on pay-per-view Sunday, March 7th. It is going to be massive, so let us not delay any further and throw it down to our colleague, Justin Roberts, standing by inside the ring. The tag team bout set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by the enforcer, Arn Anderson, at a combined weight of 355 pounds, the team of Aaron Solo and Big Shotty Lee Johnson. Representing the Nightmare family, Lee Johnson and Aaron Solo in tag team action here tonight. And their opponents at a combined weight of 362 pounds, a team of Louis Valley and Chris Peaks. Valley and Peaks making their return here to AEW Dark, but before this match gets underway, I want to remind everyone that coming up this Sunday night, March 7th, live on pay-per-view and Fight TV, it's AEW's Revolution. That big casino tag team royale match will be a part of it with the winners getting a shot at the AEW World Tag Team Championship. And the casino tag team royale match brought to you by the brand new app, AEW Casino, available today on the Apple App Store and Google Play. And Anthony, even though you competed in a, uh, a solo sport, mm -hmm. you were still part of a team that, you know, that trained together. And, you know, I mean, did you feel a sense of responsibility to, to the other guys for, for you to succeed? Yeah, massively. So on the Great Britain boxing team, we had some unbelievably talented boxers. And it's always nice when you're on the bag or, or, or shadow boxing, you look to your left, look to your right, and you see somebody with even more ability than you, it makes you want to get better and, and, and join that. And that's what I think is seen with, with Lee Johnson now and Solo. They've joined arguably the greatest wrestler in the world, Cody Rhodes and his brother Dustin, and they want to, they want some of that action, you know? Iron sharpens iron. As Aaron Solo with the side headlock takeover. Keeping Louis Valley down on the mat. Ooh, the head scissors here by Louis Valley. I think Louis Valley finally got the memo. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, he blocked that headlock takedown attempt by Solo. That was well, pretty nice the way he did that. Yeah, the memo said, don't wear orange, and also Solo's going to try to give you a headlock takeover. Right, well, there's, there was two memos. Right? So it was nice that you gave him a tip, though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't think uh, my man will wear orange ever again. No one ever should, ever, anywhere. But I digress. Even the Baltimore Orioles? <laughs> Even them. Oh, no. <laughs> What's Tim going to do? <laughs> Hopefully go away. Uh, anyway, <laughs> solo and out control gets Lee Johnson in this thing, yeah? <laughs> Lee Johnson, double sledge across the arms of Louis Valley, looking to put pressure on those elbows. And a uh, quick tag out, back to Aaron Solo. Anthony, we've seen these guys here on Dark, Solo and Johnson. They've uh, they've worked well as a team before, though they haven't been able to uh, to uh, notch a victory just quite yet, but what, what are they like in the gym? What are they like as training partners? Yeah, work really hard. I mean, they work pretty really hard. No, um, Aaron Solo is was, he's in his 12th year of, in, in the business. Covered here by Johnson. And he works just as hard now as he did when he was you know, in year one of his career. Lee Johnson, you know, he's quiet, he's a quiet young man. He turns up, he works hard. Man, he's, he's really impressive for a young guy. He squats heavy. You think he's. Oh, diving nice. knee drop there. I think Lee was telling me recently he's up to 380, squatting 380 pounds. It's about 160 odd kilos for the guys um, back yeah, home. That's pretty impressive. Hook squats more than that. Just telling you. And that's true. Listen, I got on that one, I went, I went to the gym. I found a gym in Jacksonville and yeah. I went there. And, and Hook was in there today with his headphones on, hood up, working hard. So, yes, mate, Taz, Hook is also he's a very bad man. Thank you. Well, he knows you're a bad man, too. And he doesn't respect many people, but I think he might respect you. Wait, do you think Lee Johnson is Anthony's son? No, I don't think that. Why would you say that? Louis Valley with a knee to the back of Aaron Solo, but Chris Peek's in there. Hook to the midsection. They're not related, by the way. Right. Peaks and uh, Valley. Yeah. 
when Johnson listens to this back, he's going to get be so happy that he's been there, you know, liking to my son. That's going to make his day. You're too young to be his dad. <laughs> Louis Valley, though, with the blind Ooh. tag and the double stop to the midsection of Aaron Solo. Louis Valley's just caveman like. That's his gimmick. You don't know it, but it is. <laughs> Traditionally, uh, a lot of tattooing in caveman culture. Oh, yeah, there's all sorts of arts, you know, ink. You know, they do oh. the uh, sticks, cave paintings. Cannibal cave as well, trying to bite Solo's hand. Yeah, just right. there. cannibalistic. And Solo, though, you know, he can take a lot of punishment. He, he knows how to throw hands and feet. Well, you know, he's a very good striker, so Valley's got to be careful. I would like to see Solo add a bit more aggression to his game, Taj. You know, yeah. like, he's very, very good. Covered by Valley here. He's great in ring, does everything very nice and precise. I'd like to see him get a bit more spite in his, in his strikes and kicks. Well, no, I, I agree. Uh, you know, and he's so technically sound as Solo and resilient. But you do need that, uh, that level of intensity and violence. You know that as a fighter, even through your progression now as a pro wrestler, as a pro boxer, I know you had uh, a lot of violence in you oh. in your fights, correct? 100%. Yeah. Fights by their very nature are violent. Well, you know, some people don't fight violent. <laughs> they fight. The ones that don't fight in the Olympics, they fight soft. How about that? Ah! Aaron Olympians, Solo made the tough. Tag out to Lee Johnson. Big shotty. Repeated clotheslines. And Lee Johnson drop kick, pinpoint accuracy there. Look at those quad strength you mentioned, Anthony. That's where that big drop kick ability goes. Oh, Whoa, look at that. Flying shin right there. Solo came in to the save, made the save for Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson, blue thunder bomb. One, two, three. The winners of this match, the team of Aaron Solo and Big Shotty, Lee Johnson. Aaron Solo and Lee Johnson pick up their first tag team victory here tonight on AEW Dark. And I don't know if you guys noticed it, but as soon as Lee Johnson had that northern, or excuse me, the, the blue thunder bombs just started running up the steps. Yeah, yeah. He, well, not running, he was kind of sluggishly walking. But it, it was it was essentially a walk-off. He knew it. Yeah. Good point. On knew it. And his coaching has allowed these two young men to prevail here tonight. Coming up this Sunday night, that is right, Sunday night, March 7th, AEW presents Revolution live on pay-per-view. In one of the most anticipated matchups of the entire year, Brian Cage and Ricky Starks of Team Taz will go to war with Sting and the TNT champion Darby Allen in a street fight. And for the first time ever, the Casino Tag Team Royale with the winners earning a shot at the AEW World Tag Team Championship. And speaking of the AEW World Tag Team Championship, it will be MJF and Chris Jericho challenging the Young Bucks for the titles. A lot of bad blood in this matchup. And the big money match with Hangman Adam Page taking on Matt Hardy. The winner gets 100% of the loser's Q1 revenue. What a stipulation. We will also see Miro and Kip Sabian take on Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. This one is about revenge. And six competitors will square off in the face of the Revolution ladder match with the winner getting a shot at Darby Allen and the TNT Championship. The AEW Women's World Championship will be on the line with the champion Hikaru Shida defending against the overall winner of the AEW Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament. And the AEW World Championship will be on the line in perhaps the most dangerous match we've ever seen. An exploding barbed wire death match between Kenny Omega and John Moxley for the AEW World Championship. You are not going to want to miss Revolution Live this Sunday, March 7th on Pay-Per-View and Fight TV. Well, she will be in action tomorrow night against Jade Cargill and Shaquille O'Neal. But tonight, Red Velvet in tag team action as she joins forces with Kylan King next. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring, the team of La Sicaria, Ivelisse, and Diamante. Ivelisse and Diamante, two of the meanest 
competitors in the women's division. I and love it. I, I do it. You're right, man. They are just straight mean. I think it's great. And they will be a strong test for this team coming up next. And their opponents, the team of Kylan King and Red Velvet. Red Velvet, of course, will be in action tomorrow night in the gigantic mixed tag team matchup. She will team with Cody Rhodes to take on Jade Cargill and yes, believe what I'm saying, Shaquille O'Neal tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT, AEW Dynamite. Could be a massive mixed tag match for sure tomorrow night on Dynamite. Right now, oh, look at the size difference in the height of Colleen King against Diamante. Diamante calling out Red Velvet. And Anthony, you know when you're in a, in a high profile situation like Red Velvet is, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of other people want to want to make their name at your expense. Of course, yeah, massive. You've got a target on your back. You've got a huge target, massive target on your back. Red Velvet, that's why you need a strong, a strong mind, a strong mentality. I don't know the girl very well, but when I have spoken to her, she seems very determined and very strong-minded, so I'm sure she's got what it takes to, to step up to the plate. So. Yeah, and I think, Cole, I mean, I don't like to give Cody too much credit, but, you know, he understands talent. People who have talent, people who have heart, people that are talented. And I don't, yeah, I, oh. I, I, don't, I think he's probably happy to have Red Velvet with him in his corner. I, I really do believe that, because he understands that she's ultra-talented. Red Velvet looking pretty pleased with herself after that leg lariat. Smile on her face, a lot of confidence. And confidence is important, headed in to such a big matchup tomorrow night on Dynamite. Oh, oh. Just, 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 just throwing hands, right? just throwing hands. Ooh, red backhand slap. And Red Velvet putting a, a little extra torque on that one. Tags out to Kylin King. Island King, the, the, the rangiest competitor in this matchup. Yeah, no doubt. Quick tags right here by King and, oh, Red Velvet. And Velvet continuing to her, to keep her focus on that left arm of Ivelisse. And Anthony, we've, we've seen in the past how dangerous Ivelisse is with those strikes, not just the upper body, but the lower body strikes. Yeah, no, she's a tremendous competitor. Really, really is a good, good professional wrestler. Carlin King is coming off the back of a win. So she's in, she's get, Ooh. nice move. She's gathering Co some cover, gathering some steam, and and Red Velvet. She's currently ranked number one in the women's division, so she's got more steam than anybody. Yeah, Red Velvet has a big opportunity not only for a statement victory tomorrow night on Dynamite, but I mean she really could be the next contender to the AEW Women's World Championship after Revolution coming up March 7th on Pay Per View. Got caught with that leg, nice inside sweep. Oh, but look at this. That triangle there. Right into the triangle. Eva Lise locking it in oh, wow. deep. But Kylan strength. King, yeah, that's the strength. Kylan King. Oh, wow. oh that arm bar is getting even tighter now. Look at that, she's hanging onto the rope, Diamante. But Eva Lise only had five seconds to break the hold. But right now, Diamante and Eva Lise putting in work on that left arm of Kylan King. Oh, trying to pull it out of socket there. It might have. A Piper extended my elbow numerous times in boxing when you throw a jab and you miss a punch. It's a really nasty injury, isn't it, isn't it, Taz? Yeah, no, I, I've, I actually did not. I did the same thing, not with a punch, getting a hit and then landing to my side. And if I pop my elbow out, it hurts a lot. It hurts like hell. Even when it goes back in, it hurts. Diamante. Oh. Diving drop kick wow. in the corner to the face of Kylan King. They are really controlling King and keeping her in that corner of Diamante. Ooh. Just a, a punt to the shoulder. Double wrist lock right here. And this is why they won the, the Women's Tag Team Cup, because they're a great team. They work. Oh, yeah. They got great synergy with each other. There's no doubt about it. Gotcha. And they have that same disposition that Excalibur kind of was losing at the top of the match. They're both mean. They, maybe they're watching some Taz tapes. Well, it could be. I mean, I'm not that old. My stuff's just on tape now. It's kind of digital, right? You get streaming Taz matches. It's on Betamax, actually. Beta oh! <laughs> the knees of Diamante 
being driven into the that, that arm. Oh! Dude, man. Taz, can you explain the importance of picking a, a body part and working on it? Sure, just you, you you wear down one side, especially your limb, if it's a leg or an arm, and it's just, you take it, you take a one quarter of someone's body away. And if you think about it like that, you're taking a quarter of their body away. And if it's an arm in this situation, you, know, you take that size that Kylie King has and you, you alleviate it, you take it away. Mm. Keep your eye out for the best of Taz. Volume three, coming to an indigenous cave painting somewhere near you. Kyle King back and he Eva Lee into the corner. Trying for the old uh yeah, the old uh, Princess Bride uh, break of the, the right. sleeper hold of the death. Yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. she's showing great, she's showing great resilience, Colin King. Big clothesline. And she laid out with that clothesline. That yeah. was an all or nothing shot, and luckily for Kylan King, it landed. She's got to get Red Velvet in this thing here. She's got to use those long arms and legs to get over to Red Velvet. You can see Kylan King clutching that left arm, keeping that elbow close to the body, but Red Velvet tags in, and she is fired up, raining shots down on Diamante, she's and quick. one for Eva Lise as well. She's quick, and you can see she's locked in for tomorrow night. Oh, look at this, talking about locked in. Oh. Both women exchanging center of the ring. Diamante getting the better of it, though. Ooh. Double knees to the back. Red Velvet standing, Moonsault Press hooks the leg, but Eva Lee breaks it up. Good job, Eva Lee. Very smart, good teamwork. Watching your opponent, I'm sorry, your partner's back, I should say. A great interception there of Diamante. Red Velvet put her body in, in between the partners, but got rattled by that NZ Gary. Yeah, don't fall in that corner. That's not where you want to be. Eva Lee and Diamante pouring the pressure on. Oh! Ooh. They went for that stereo knee strike, but they missed. You know, Kylie King still down on that apron. Yeah, I think Kylan King is really having trouble oh. with that left arm. Oh, oh man! Jeez. Eva, at least one, two. No, Kylan King breaking up the pin. King's not 100, percent but good job able to break up that pin cover. And we know there's, there's going to be a lot of eyes on Dynamite Ooh. tomorrow night. But Eva Lee and Demon. Oh, look at this red velvet. Watch Rolls out. Through. Oh! oh! The hook kick to the face. The running boot to the side of the head. Eva Lee is down. One, two, three. Here are your winners Kyron King and Red Velvet. Well, it wasn't easy, but Red Velvet and Kylan King picked up the victory here tonight. The hook kick was the beginning of the end, and the running drop kick to the side of the head secured the victory for Red Velvet. And she heads into the biggest match of her life tomorrow night at Dynamite with some momentum. Red Velvet, Cody Rhodes versus Jade Cargill and Shaquille O'Neal. Him out. That's what I'm gonna do to you, Cupcake Cody. Attack Brandy. Now it's personal. Cody Rhodes teams up with Red Velvet to take on Jade Cargill and Shaq. I'll be there, you little punk. It's the Crossroads, an AEW Dynamite event, Wednesday at 8 on TNT. The number five ranked top flight take on the team of Fuego del Sol and John Cruz tag team action next year on Dark. This is the tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Minneapolis, Minnesota, at a combined weight of 405 pounds, Darius and Dante Martin, top flight. A big moment came for this team last Wednesday when it was announced that they had cracked the top five for the first time in their AEW careers. Being ranked number five, as we know, the records reset at the beginning of the year, and they are undefeated in 2021. 
and their opponents at a combined weight of 340 pounds, Fuego del Sol and John Cruz. Well, before this match gets underway, I want to remind everybody that coming up this Sunday night on pay-per-view and Fight TV, it's AEW's Revolution. And of course, part of that event will be the big casino tag team royale with the winners getting a shot at the AEW World Tag Team Championship top flight. Already announced for that matchup, they will be competing and hope to get a shot at the world titles. Casino Tag Team Royale match brought to you by AEW Casino, available in the Apple App Store and on Google Play. Well, Darius, you know, he's uh, just like his brother, he's so athletic, so quick. Got to keep an eye on him. See what I'm saying? He's got that explosiveness off the tackle to his own tackle. Cartwheels the over the, yeah, say, the, yeah. the trip attempt. Tons of Dora Jones. But the waist lock hung on to by Darius. Uh oh. Rolled through. Ooh, there you it's go. Fuego into a pin. I thought he was going to bridge back on that. Oh, that was nice. Rolled over into a side headlock. Fuego immediately scissors the, the head. Side headlock there. A back and forth contest here. Fuego gets the leg swept out. Darius. Oh, Fuego sweeps the leg of Darius out. Oh, did you see that? Great ankle pick. That yeah, was really nice. Darius up to his feet. Both men Oof. breaking the grips, but Darius gets the better of the exchange with the drop kick right there. The beautiful drop kick. Darius elevated over the corner. Dante got the tag. I'm not sure Fuego realized it. Oof. He might not realize nothing after that clothesline. Massive clothesline. Suplex tag out. Dante elevates over the top rope. Hooks the far leg. No. This has been an intense pace. These guys are so fast. It's like trying to call a, a horse race. A horse race, like the, the Grand National, they're so quick. Yeah, at any moment, uh, as Top Flight keeps evolving rapidly here in AEW, I feel like it's just a matter of time before, they, a, before they're AEW World Tag Team Champions. They're just, their synergy, their chemistry is amazing. Dante rolled Fuego back to the corner. John Cruz tagged himself in. Dante ducks, went for the trip. Cruz able to avoid contact. Leave wow. the frog. Catches Cruz in the Tierras and takes him down. And a massive drop kick from Dante Martin. Space outstanding, yeah, outstanding. Taz, you mentioned the AEW World Tag Team Championship. That will be on the line this Sunday night, March 7th, at Revolution on pay-per-view when Chris Jericho and MJF challenge the Young Bucks for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. Yeah, massive, massive. Cover here by Cruz. Two. That's what we saw what happened on Dynamite with Jericho and, you know, and M MJF did. Yeah, uh, attacking, uh, attacking the Young Bucks' father. It was, uh, I mean, it was, it was a senseless, Com completely unnecessary type of violence. A, a criminal act, Taz. Oh, yeah, I mean, I could understand that to a degree, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, you gotta be careful. If you're in this environment, that could happen. Way go down, so shooting start press. Puts the far leg. Just a two count from referee Rice, Bryce Remsburg. It's not a uh, nice environment. You know, professional wrestlers, uh, by nature, are very mean, aggressive, violent people. Let's be frank. Yeah, but I mean, if you're if you're the father of uh, of somebody, you don't necessarily expect to be assaulted just uh, just for being in uh, at, at their, your children's workplace. Oh, I'm at my son's workplace. People want to attack me all the time. I mean, really? I, I only do it verbally, Taz. <laughs> Back, back elbow there by Darius Martin. Anthony, how impressive his top flight looked. They have lived up to every bit of that number five ranking. Unbelievable. And you've got to remember that that uh, Dante is, is... Oh, oh wow. 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 Two, no. Right his own head. Dante is 19 years old. Darius is 21 years old. They're babies. They're babies in the, in, in the scheme of being men. And I mentioned it last week. When, when, when a young man gets their man strength, they become even better, and these guys have such a massive upside. Spanish fly John Cruz, a nasty move. He hung on to the ropes. He got the elbow up into the face of Darius. Dante whoa, whoa, Martin whoa. sent high up over the top rope. Fuego del Sol tags himself in. Fuego del Sol coming over the top rope that Tierras takes down Darius Martin, and now John Cruz. Tope Suicida driving Dante Martin into the barricade. I think, uh, sorry, John Cruz is definitely seeing the stars after that, after that Spanish fly. Still. Yeah, he's not 100% after that Spanish fly. What's uh, Fuego here? Fuego oh, to wow. Sol. Cancun Tornado 
off the top, taken down. The Martin brothers on the outside. High flying and death to flying. Mm. Fuego del Sol. And what a blow it would be for top fight to finally crack the top five and slide out the very next week. Fuego del Sol boot to the midsection stops. He's going for Dante. it. Tornado. Good for the tornado DDT, no. Dante and Darius have Fuego. Uh oh, oh just uppercut to the guts. <laughs> Watch it, a bread basket. And Dante Martin rolls Fuego del Sol through Darius. As Fuego up and just planted down into a bulldog. One, two, three. There are your winners. Top flight. It was an easy task, but Top Flight hung on and scored the victory here tonight. Yeah, no, it was physical. It was, it's a lot of, a lot of moves in this match. A lot of high impact moves and unique moves and dangerous moves. And there was a lot of physicality. Top Flight remains with their momentum, gets the victory. They call that move the icebreaker. The icebreaker certainly done the job tonight. Top Flight remains undefeated in the year 2021. Taz, your favorites and mine, the Gun Club, Billy, Austin, and Colton Gunn in trios action next year on Dark. This is a six-man tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Orlando, Florida, at a total combined weight of 690 pounds, Austin, Colton, and Billy Gunn. Gun Club! Gun Club returning to action here tonight on AEW Dark. As Austin, who's entering the ring, Colton, who's now entering the ring, and Billy, who's now entering the ring. And they're all in the Nightmare family also. I don't know if Colton is. I, I could have sworn I saw something on social media. If it's on social media, it's the truth. All right. Maybe I'm wrong. And their opponents, at a total combined weight of 611 pounds, the team of Tony Vega, Aaron Fry, and Angel Fashion. First time seeing this trio in action here tonight. They are going to have a tall order against them, not just because Billy Gunn's in this matchup test. No, I mean, listen, it's, it's family. It's, it's two sons and a dad, and Billy's struggling getting the shirt off. But yeah, so I mean, yeah, it's going to be tough going through this chemistry there amongst the gun club. Dad, did you hear about the gun jar? Uh, no, I didn't. They, threw, I have it, to? they threw it in the river. What river? Here in Jacksonville? St. John's. Yeah, right, right, right. What's in the jar? Oh, the, the jar we had to put money into every time we said Billy Gunn. Oh, that jar. Yeah, we can say it. Again. Oh, I know Billy Gunn a long time. Yeah, never beat you. <laughs> never beat me. Billy Gunn never beat me. <laughs> Austin Gunn with the escapes the waist lock, but Fry with the uh, the side headlock there. Yeah, he's got Austin pretty tight right there with that side head. Aaron Fry, though, losing the grip. Nope, brings the grip back in. But you see uh, Austin Gunn pushing up uh, on the on the head, the jaw of Aaron Fry to force him to relinquish the grip. Goes right to a transition into an arm bar. It was good by Austin. Aaron Fry, though, just a uh, slap to the to the midsection. I mean, not not doing a lot of damage but can kind of get your opponent off balance. Yeah, just to get some momentum, you know? Yeah. And, uh, that, that one doing a bit of damage, though. See uh, Austin feeling the effects of that. Well, Billy's complaining. It was, a, it was a clean punch, a clean strike. What's the complaint about to the referee? Hammer throw across the ring. Oh, Austin did a little, uh, little hiccup. Yep, but he's still elevated over. Fry swept the leg out. And the flipping face buster there by Austin Gunn. Just shooting indiscriminately into the crowd. Well, he does that. All of those people struck by invisible bullets. Well, sometimes you get shot on. Just saying. So there's a lot of movements. I'm getting dizzy watching the gun club. His hands, his basketball dunking. And Colton just dunking on Angel fashion there. There's, there's 
gun motions, six shooters. Oh, angle fast. There's another basketball move, a little basketball step right there. You see what he did? Yeah, I did. Hanging neck breaker, hooked to that fire leg. Angel Fashion kicks out. And just put the basketball in the ring there. Start dribbling. Doesn't really bounce well. How obnoxious is it that the gun club have matching boots, matching color, a turquoise trunk, which is a nice turquoise, but the matching boots get some of Taz, shouldn't they wear nightmare family colors? What's that color? Black and silver? Taz, you and Hook walk in wearing an identical outfit. That's not true, and you're a liar. You had these skinny jeans on. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> oh, jeez. No, it looked like they poured you into them. <laughs> yeah. Him and I do not have the same fashion taste, I promise. Shot to the midsection there by Austin Gunn. Boot to that. Side of the head by Billy. Drop kick there nice. by Colton. Great drop kick. Tony Vega very nearly got beat there by Austin Gunn, but he's able to kick out. Newer, younger competitor, you know, Colton Gunn definitely, uh, you know, he's got his act together, but has a really good drop kick. Really good drop kick. I mean, a lot of good things he does. I'm not just saying his drop kick. Taz, Gunn family, I think good drop kicks run in the family. True. Well, oh. you know, I mean, sometimes that happens, I guess. Expert. Wow, Vega, huh? Colton just blasted. I guess that's as close to a compliment as the Gunn family can expect from Taz. Had to put him over for 10 minutes. Aaron Fry returns to the ring, stopped to the midsection of Austin Gunn. Oh, Austin now has got Fry all over. I'm thinking of like ketchup on the Well, it's better to have Fry all over you than fries all over you. Plural. Depends on what you're into, guys. All right. I'm a Florida Chicago brother. Tony Vega. You wear a mask all the time, so that kind of explains it. Like my friend's super strong suplex machine. Hold on. Still haven't met him. He's snowed in in Boise. Vega now controlling Austin Gunn's head. Doing a good job keeping it over the corner. Oh, fashion. Oh. Flat of his boot into the ribcage of Austin Gunn there. Fashion. Bringing Austin up to the feet, sending him hard into the corner. Angel Fashion making the tag out to Tony Vega. They are, they have isolated very successfully Austin Gunn here, Taz. They have it, but there's not much chemistry, let's be frank, between Fry and Vega and uh, the Fashion. There's not. Yeah, I mean, they are making their, their trios tag team debut. It's a, it's a bit of a tall order to expect synergy right out of the gate. And, uh, now Tony Vega covers Austin Gunn immediately kicking out. Better get Colton and Billy Gunn both in the corner holding those tag ropes for God's sakes. Gotta hold tag ropes. So there's only tag ropes. Yeah. Yeah. Tag ropes. Yeah. Yeah. Austin Gunn elevates over Tony Vega, makes the tag out to Billy. And Angel Fashion walked right into her right hand, as did Tony Vega, as did Aaron Fry. Right, oh, man. Sent out the hard way. Billy Gunn. Oh. Get your ass out of here! <laughs> Such a nice person, Billy. Well, the thing is, Billy Gunn just, it just looks amazing all the time. The guy just doesn't age. It's disturbing. Boot to the midsection, Billy Gunn. Setting up Angel Fashion. Oh, the Schneebits. Hit him with the famous sir, center of the ring. One, two, no. Aaron Fry broke it up. Wow, and Austin's not taking that from Fry. Wait a minute. Uh oh, Fry sending Austin the outside, but swept out the legs. And oh, man. Oh, Tasha Price almost got bumped on a butt. <laughs> He's right on the other side of that guardrail. Swing and a miss there by Angel Fash. Oh, boot to the midsection, sent into the ropes. Oh, backdrop. Oh, oh, look at that, the 310 to Yuma. Billy Gunn covers deep hook and picks up the victory. Here are your winners. The Gun Club. Taz, how impressive did Gun Club look tonight? Very impressive, all three men. Colton, Austin, and Billy Gunn. Very impressive, gotta say it. Billy Gunn must have not had his earbuds in on the HR Zoom call. He could have a complaint in the very near future. Well, batting down the proverbial hatches as the cliche goes.
Abaddon is in action next. Beware. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the Black Hills. Abaddon! Taz, not scared of many things in life. Actually, that's not true. I'm constantly frightened. <laughs> You're such a man. But two things that I am scared of specifically here on AEW Dark are Negative One and Abaddon. Well, I understand that. Uh, I, you know, I'm not afraid of many things either, but Abaddon's definitely up there. I mean, she's uh, it's tough to explain. Look at this. Ugh. Oh, wow. I think our tongue grew since the last time we saw her. The size of the tongue and the crazy and her face. From Washington, D.C., Renee Michelle. The blood all over the tongue. Renee Michelle's looking at her like, what the she heck is, is going on? Perplexed. I mean, no matter how much you train and what you do as a pro wrestler, you're not ready for something like Abaddon. And Taz uh, Abaddon, we saw her record at the bottom of the screen, seven and two. Important to note that those two losses came at the hands of the AEW Women's World Champion, Hikaru Shida. That's the only woman to ever defeat Abaddon in AEW. That's so impressive. I mean, the losses, but it shows how good Abaddon can be. And she wins so many of her matches. Oh! Wow. Before the match even happens, like I said, but in the past, she gets in your psyche. And it looks like Renee Michelle doesn't know what to make of Abaddon and is completely overwhelmed here. Yeah, Renee Michelle, she, you can see her face. She's, she's, she, I don't think she realizes what she got herself into. No, I mean, you know, sometimes when when you get the opportunity to compete on dark, you don't really really think about who you're matched up against. You just see it as a, you know, what it is, an opportunity, Taz. Sure, sure. And that didn't work. That didn't work. Oh, the kick to the top of the knee, though. Renee Michelle battering Abaddon with shots. Michelle hits her ropes and Abaddon shuts her down. Hard clothesline. Abaddon crawling after Renee Michelle. And with just the, the whip, the back of the head. Tremendous force, tremendous power there by yeah. Abaddon. Yeah, Renee Michelle, there's just not much she can do. Oh, oh my God, that was nasty. Double knee strikes in the corner. And Renee, she's terrified. Abaddon bringing Renee Michelle to the center. With the double underhooks in, but Renee Michelle fighting trying desperately. To block it, trying to block it. And, oh, big elbow strike. Abaddon. She's like knocked out on her feet. Maybe not. Oh, wow. Just pulled her into a short arm shoulder tackle there. Did Abaddon on Renee Michelle. Abaddon has Renee Michelle hooked up. The hands clasped underneath the chin. The cemetery drive. Forget it. Abaddon rolls her over, covers two, three. The winner of this match, Abaddon. Taz, we've never heard Abaddon speak. I don't even know if she can. I, I hope gotta, I got a feeling she can, but I understand why you would think that. Because I want her nowhere near this desk. I hear you. Summitary Drive right there. Renee Michelle fell victim to Abaddon like so many other women have. Abaddon, victorious in emphatic fashion here tonight on AEW Dark. Wednesday on TNT. Darby Allen! On the last show before Revolution. Oh! AEW is at the crossroads. Oh! Don't miss the mega-sized Dynamite event. That's what I'm gonna do to you, Cupcake Cody. Wednesday night, Dynamite at 8, followed by the countdown to Revolution on TNT. Stu Grayson representing the Dark Order takes on the big and bad J.D. Drake next year on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. 
approaching the ring from Shelby, North Carolina, weighing 301 pounds, J.D. Drake. As J.D. Drake made his AEW debut last week here on Dark, he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eddie Kingston, and it was a war. Yeah, they had a battle. Two big robot guys had a battle. That's a big ass towel he's got there. That's a Join big ass bath order. towel. That's a beach towel. Actually. Beach, that's the word, not bad. <laughs> it's a huge towel. Uh... And his opponent from the keep, weighing 193 pounds, Stu Grayson. Stu Grayson, born and bred for combat with his Dark Order brethren at his side, and of course, their leader, Negative One. Negative One on top of the shoulders, there he is. Negative One, rocking jewelry. Got a cool mask. He's got a new mask, he had that mask last week. I love it, he's got the one on it. He's cutting promos. Well, he's got a negative two uh, over the, uh, the right eye. He can have whatever he wants. He's bad to the phone, baby. J.D. Drake and Stu Grayson, this is a... Uh... Man, negative one really psyched up. <laughs> I'm going to touch his head. <laughs> head. <laughs> nervous every time he does that. Collar and elbow tie up. Drake takes the side headlock. Wrenching in on Stu Grayson. Grayson sends Drake into the ropes, but Drake very easily trucked Grayson with that one. Drake looks like he just got out of the cracker barrel. But I love it. He's just raw bone, big, mean, nasty, Ooh. fancy. You know, that chopped didn't bother him. Man. Yeah, J.D. Drake and Eddie Kingston ripped each other with chops last week here on Dark. Both men's chests were, were bloody after that matchup. And I mean, it's not often, Ted, no. that you see somebody get bloodied by a chop. I agree. That's raw meat. And I'll tell you what, the guy who eat raw meat is Stu Grayson, one of the toughest guys on our roster. So this is uh, definitely a battle, as they say. Stu Grayson is, uh, I mean, he's tough, but he's extremely well-conditioned. And. Oh, now it's just turned into a hockey fight. J.D. Drake, I think, getting the better of it as he back. Oh, just as I said that, Grayson, the body shots. Canadians versus the Hurricanes, right? Carolina gimmick. Yes, you get it. I get it. I'm begging you to put it over. It's a pretty good analogy. I thought it was badass, actually. You ruined it. <laughs> Anyways. Whoa, watch out. J.D. Drake. Oh, wow. Sent to the apron. Oh, got Ooh. his leg swept out from underneath. Grayson with the kick. And now Woo! elevating oh, over yeah. the top. Shot, yeah. Great sent on. Look at the chest of both men, both, though, yeah, I was going to say, both guys. Grayson. It's, oh, my oh, wow. God. That was wild. <laughs> Just a, a clubbing shot to the side of the head. I like that. It was, I mean, there's nothing fancy about it, man. It was effective. J.D. Drake continuing. Oh, sits out with a big senton. Covers here, hooks the far leg. Grayson, though, kicks out at one. Boom. Oh, wow, right in the spine. Look, here's that unique clothesline here. Just boom, clubbing clothesline against the head. Grayson didn't know what hit him. Snapmare there, and Drake, point of the knee in between the shoulder blades of Stu Grayson. Wrenching back on the chin, and twisting the neck, trying to add a little more torque, a little more punishment. Dark order, Stu Grayson. Grayson, look at this. Trying for an Urnage, but... Yeah, just too big, Did you hear what Drake said? He called him a dummy. <laughs> 300 and uh, 300 plus pounds of JD Drake. Uh oh. <laughs> Taz, this is <laughs> this is like the Hurricanes and the Canadiens. Oh, that's a great line. Look <laughs> <laughs> to that man's sex head kick. Oh, what a shot! Right hand, Drake. There it is. Oh, got planted in Grayson. Kick to the chest, diving knee drop by Stu Grayson. J.D. Drake getting up to his feet with the assistance of the ropes. Grayson, spear in the corner. 
Grayson. Oh, oh wow. Springboarding off, flying shoulder, twisting in the air. And that's the, uh, I mean, that's what makes Stu Grayson so dangerous, that he's strong, he's well-conditioned, but he's he's extremely fast, too. No, he is, at, to your point, he can strike you from any point in that ring at any time. J.D. Drake, oh, elevates over Stu Grayson, belly to belly, he threw him across the ring! Yeah, Lee never even clasped his hands, he kind of just chucked him. And Drake, almost a diving leg drop off the middle rope, covers two, no, oh, wow, that was, that was, that that was, was a deep two count. That was close, I'll tell you, J.D. thought he got the win, but he didn't. Can't afford to get flustered here, especially with an athlete the caliber of Stu Grayson. Drake headed up to the mid. Nope, Stu actually goes to the outside. Oof. Launches a right hand into the face of J.D. Drake. What Stu didn't do here. Oh, wow, from outside in, hit him with the hook on Rana. Stu Grayson headed up to the top. Look at Stu. 450 splash, nobody home, but he's able to land on his feet, but J.D. Drake landed a massive running boot. That was sub boot, you're right, damn near knocked the head off of Stu Grayson. J.D. Drake up to his feet, Stu Grayson in the corner. Cannonball sent on nobody home. Drake a little bit rattled there. Grayson comes up, swinging, DDT. Drake's in trouble. Stu Grayson, bicycle knee strike. J.D. Rocked, Drake. Man. Rocked. Rocked his right. Uh oh, and Stu. What a power. Stu Grayson has J.D. Drake up. And the night fall. Almost blew his own knee out. One, two, three. The winner of this match, Stu Grayson. Very impressive, I'm not surprised. No knock on J.D. Drake, he's excellent. But I'll tell you what, this man Grace is at another level. Taz, we've seen Stu Grayson hit that nightfall, that backbreaker on opponents twice his size before. It is never anything short of amazing. He loves the challenge of doing that, of getting someone up in the air much heavier than him and, and pulling a nightfall off. Stu Grayson picking up a massive victory here tonight on AEW Dark. Hello, my name is Anthony Bones, the most critically acclaimed man in professional wrestling, and this is Platinum Max, and welcome to the Acclaimed Shopping Network. And on today's show, we're selling something cool, magical, and spooky. It's the Dark Ooh. Order's Kool-Aid. And we have someone who's gonna try it live on the Ooh. air. Come on, buddy, take yeah. a sip. Let's yeah. see what it does. Oh, 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 oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Oh, it's you! It's, it's 100! It's 10's identical twin! He looks just like him! He's so small and frail! And gross oh. and stupid! He smells awful! Yeah, he's Oh, look at that shit. Platinum, Max, I'm about to qualify against a guy named Ten, but he couldn't draw a dime with his ten cent brain. Ten dollar body, who loves the acclaim? Everybody, the ten day forecast, all rain, but you face me, so you seeing them stars, man. Platinum, with the visibility, I got the ability to make the Max something that the fans wanna really see. Uh, you're welcome, keep riding my coattails, I'm the only one in this match you just won't fail more charisma in my teeny tiny toenail than you have in your whole body oh well see me in the ring the best wrestler alive be careful with your knees when you step in inside yes they call me platinum because i'm destined to shine i'ma climb the corporate ladder one step at a time yo what's up with your chest that's a skin rash matter of fact don't talk shut the zipper on your gimp mask i be drumming on your neck call it whiplash Andre Drummond with the check, I got a big bag platinum. Me against 10, that's a mismatch on BTE. Every single skit's bad. In a dark order, you're a hanger on. Looking like SpongeBob with your anchor arms. Fake muscles, yeah, I know you ain't too strong. Wednesday, dynamite, no place to run. Try to step to the acclaimed, I'm a gangster, son. No, I'm not the revolution, I'm the face of one. Platinum, Max, I'm about to qualify against a guy named Ken, but he couldn't draw a dime with this 10 cent brain. $10 body, who loves the acclaim? Everybody. 
Well, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining us on the Acclaim Shopping Network. Don't forget to watch Max Caster beat the absolute crap out of 10 tomorrow night on Dynamite. And stay tuned. He's going to beat the crap out of J.J. Garrett, too. Head to shopacclaimed.com. Head to shopaew.com and check out the Acclaim's brand new t-shirt. You're going to want it. You're going to love it. And all your friends are going to be jealous. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Big time tag team match coming up right now. Mbadu and Baron Black go against Bear Country. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Bear Mountain, New York at a combined weight of 604 pounds. Bear Boulder, Bear Bronson, Bear Country. Bear Country, an impressive 2-0 in the tag team division here in All Elite Wrestling. They strike a pretty fearsome figure there. That's Boulder on the left, Bronson on the right. And their opponents at a combined weight of 468 pounds, Mbadu and Baron Black. Baron Black and Mbadu. Taz, I believe, just got some bad news from his accountant, just spiked his phone. Nick Camarado's my accountant, but that's a whole different topic. So you let a guy from the Nightmare family do your taxes. Well, I, that's, I just fired him, because I heard he was the Nightmare. He's not with my company anymore. I think someone else. Baron Black and Bronson starting things off in this matchup for their respective teams. Bronson with the switch sends Baron into the Rosta back elbow. Big Bronson with that elbow. Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh big yeah. time full body slam. Bronson coming up. Oh, delayed elbow. Cover here. Just a one count. Mean, mean, aggressive. That's what bad country is. That's how a lot of people are up in Bear Mountain. I've spent a lot of time up there in the summers. Catskills. Yeah, I camp up there a lot. I pick up a tent, a little pop-up tent. You should let Bear Country do your taxes. Well, I mean, if they screw it up, like, what's the IRS going to do? Come after these guys? No, not these guys. They could be. It's tax season, everybody. That's great. Get yourself a good CPA. <laughs> Go up there to Bear Mountain. Tell you what, man. I've done, like I said, a lot of camp. Big camper, you know. Love to bring the big water jug and the pop up. I'm gonna go with Bear Country in the summertime. We're gonna go up camp and get about a lake. If oh! If you're a fan watching AEW Dark internationally, uh, pay your taxes, man. That's how they pave the roads. Bronson just swarming. Yeah, just a beatdown on Baron Black. Oh, and oh. Badu got dropped. That's rare for the big man to get dropped like that. Baron with a shot to the back of oh, Bronson. Taz. Do you think they booked these matches because there's a lot of bees in there? Yes. You got, well, they, ba you got Baron Black, you got Bear Boulder, Bear Bronson, Bear Mbadu. Country, Mbadu. You got uh, you know, Bal Perna. No relation to Paul Turner, ref in the match. Bal Perna. Baron, oh, 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 God. Oh, oh. Man, that was a hard landing. Mbadu, oh, truck. Bronson on the outside. Mbadu. I think one of the greatest names in the history of pro wrestling. Well, maybe not the history, but it's a really good name. It's a good name. Might be a little bit of an overstatement. Tony Giovanni, line one. Ah, ah, joke. Watch out. Oh. <laughs> Aaron Black concentrating on that left shoulder of Bronson, trying to uh, to mitigate the strength advantage. Look at this, Aaron Black. Using that ring post, man. Showing yeah, off his mean streak, man. Baron Black is, uh, you know, I mean, he's, he's a really uh, soft-spoken, thoughtful guy. But, you know, we're seeing a, a different side of him. As how do you know he's thoughtful? Like, how do you know that? He just punched the guy in the face while he was down. He's thoughtful? He might be soft-spoken, Excalibur. How do you know he's thoughtful? Has he bought you something for the holidays? No, I meant he's thoughtful, like he's introspective. Like when you ask him a question, he takes a little time to think about it. He wants to, wants to give a good answer. He wants to give uh, an answer that, that means something. He doesn't want to just uh, deal in platitudes like you do, Taz. Oh, okay. 
I didn't know that's where you're going, but that's cool. Bronson tried to uh, tried to send Mbadu into the ropes, but you can see that that shoulder bothering him, and Mbadu cap capitalized there with a the diving shoulder block. Ball burner only gets the <laughs> signals that it's a two count. Ball burner. <laughs> That's true. It's true to it's, it's burner is with a B, not a. Uh, or, I mean, with an E, not a U. <laughs> Paul Paul Turner just became ball burner. <laughs> That's what he checks at the hotels as. <laughs> Zellius. Oh! <laughs> Mbadu with an opportunity here. One. Oh, good job by Paul. <laughs> there we go. That's the legal man. And that's the that comes from the the inexperience of tagging together. Yeah. Well, yes, yeah, true. You didn't know who was legal, who wasn't. Bronson trying to pump himself up as Aaron Black, though, keeping the pressure on that left shoulder. Has once again got some bad tags. <laughs> They're slamming my phone, but I'm getting so mad. Oh, Baron Black, though, driving the shoulder of Bronson in. No. And did you see that? Baron Black was trying to overcome that strength advantage. He, his body was completely off the ground and on the upper body of Bronson for that pin. Did you let uh, Anthony go to your taxes? What does he know about American tax law? He's Why are you obsessed with taxes? Ooh. Man, he's redding up uh, the Bear Bronson. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, Baron Black got saturated with that suplex, Taz. Yep. Dying of my drop-in, Monty. Bear Boulder wants to get in this thing. And he does. Bronson made that tag. Shoulder blocks all around him. Badu sent far to the barricades. And now Boulder just rocking. No pun intended. Baron Black. I mean, it's just like you know, we were discussing all the bad country. They've just been dominant in oh. recent weeks, and that's what they are. I mean, I'm a big fan. I mean, they just, between Bronson and Boulder, they're just they're badass. It's that simple. Mbadu sent into the Ooh. corner and squished by the boulder. Look at that big man in bottle getting put up in the air by Bronson. That's, I'm sorry, by Boulder. That's not easy. Oh, man. That's even harder. Boulder. What the hell? Oh, my God. With both men. The Samoan drop, fall away, slam combination. I'm thinking Badu might have got the worst of that. I'm just saying. Yeah, bag city. Yeah, he got squished. Uh-oh, that's not a good sign right now for Baron Black. Aaron dragged to the corner. Moonsault press, nobody home. Boulder took a moment to, to really steal himself before he went up, and that allowed Baron Black to, to make the escape. And Badu set him up, and Baron Black capitalizes the, the backstabber here. One. Shoot! Oh, man! Good job. I got to tell you, your back country with the proper coaching and guidance, I think they could be a top-level team here in AEW. They don't need to take some of the risks that they're taking. Oh! Oh, God! <laughs> that, was, that was insane. They don't need to do that, though. I mean, it was really impressive, in my opinion, to keep them on ground base, but it worked. The Tope Suicida and Bronson just smushed Mbadu on the outside. I don't think every match needs to do stuff like that. Once in a while, once in a while, you pull, maybe once or twice a year, big moves like that out. Oh! They're and doing this stuff to please the fans. I mean, they got the win, but they're doing it to please the fans. The hell with the fans! Get the wins! No winners of this match. Bear Country! Well, Taz, they, they impressed the fans, but they also got the win. Yes! Oh, wait a second, what is oh, this? Let's go back to this live action here. Butcher let's and the go Blade. Back to the live action, we got a problem here. Hold Butcher on. and the Blade have hit the ring. And if you recall back to the tag team battle royal, there was some hostilities between these two oh, teams. Oh, baby. Just a few weeks ago on Dynamite. Butcher sending Bronson to the outside and Blade battering. That's Butcher and Blade. They will tear you apart. Now Butcher's got Bronson. Oh no. 
Oh, God, the bunny. That left shoulder. That left shoulder of Bronson was damaged by Baron Black and the Butcher and the Blade. Continuing the assault. Talk about being dominant, huh? You know who we are? You know who we are? Taz. Butcher Buffalo country, and uh, not bear country. Blade. I mean, these these are two men who I would not want to count as enemies. No, no, you don't want that. You don't want that with Butcher and Blade. The Dark Order's Evil Uno, Colt Cabana, and Allen, number five angels in six-man action next year on Dark. Join the Dark Order. This is a six-man tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a total combined weight of 594 pounds, the team of Evil Uno, Alan Five Angels, and Colt Boom Boom Join the dark Cabana. Taz, I'm just going to come out and say it. Great to see Negative One wearing shoes. Yes, it's actually yes, but he doesn't wear sleeves. If you have guns like Negative One, you don't have to wear sleeves. That's like a, that's like a, a, a long, uh, a long rifle. Where's he headed? You got to be careful. Brody Lee Jr. right there, always stalking. A little cheeky smile there, devious. Notice the nod to the late great Brody Lee with the jacket. And their opponents still get And a total combined weight of 636 pounds. A team of Levi Shapiro, John Schuyler, and Ryzen. Yeah, it's, it's actually a, a great homage to uh, Brody Lee, Colt Cabana, one of uh, the men in the AEW locker room that uh, that had actually like, the longest relationship with, with Brody Lee was Colt Cabana. Yeah, you can tell that jacket. It, it, Brody had the long jacket, mm. like not not a roll, but he was a, had a shorter version than Colt, but the same type of purple panels on it. Uh, Colt Cabana and John Schuyler starting things off for their respective teams. Scott and Skyler, you can see with the, the big knee brace on that right knee. Great to see him back in action. We mentioned that, uh, I believe it was last week. Yeah, he seems to be moving well, Skyler. 100%, I would think, for sure. Cabana looking for the sunset flip. Skyler put on the brakes. Nope, Cabana rolls him through. Sending Skyler. Oh, no. Cabana was the one that went into the ropes. Ducks under and the double chop. <laughs> that was well done by Cole Cabana. <laughs> Made himself a little wobbly there. Very unique uh, silver elbow pad on this with the, the talk it usually has on that. Couldn't get a word. It's a, it's a chain store. Yeah, and they have the red and white logo. Oh, my wife spent a ton of money there. I know all about it. She got, she got the card? She had all sorts of stuff. A plethora of cards, but I think the rest. Yul Uno sent into the ropes by John Schuyler, who hit the reversal, then the shoulder to the midsection. Skyler tags out to Levi Shapiro. Shapiro seeing his first action of the match, drops the elbow across the chest of Evil Uno. Yeah, Shapiro, interesting. Very interesting what's going on here. It's like a Shaw brother test. There's shades of Ron Shaw, we discussed that last week. No, I was talking about the Kung Fu movie producer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Evil Uno drops Shapiro. Manhattan drop there. And Evil Uno bringing Shapiro over to the corner. Number five, Alan Angels tags in. And Alan Angels, a couple weeks ago on AEW Dynamite, when uh, Matt Hardy, Private Party, and TH2 were assaulting Hangman Adam Page, Alan Angels got right up in the face of Matt Hardy, didn't back down. Who was jacked in his face? Yeah, and he started uh, laying in right hands, much like he is to Levi Shapiro here. But then one week later, one, just uh, six days ago, on Dynamite, Hardy had his revenge, throwing Angels off the stage through the timekeeper's table. Oh, drop kick there. Cover here, one, two. And it seems like the, the forces of the universe keep uh, keep pushing Hangman Page and Dark Order together. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. And we'll see. We'll see how it evolves and has time, uh, as time goes by. And it will be Hangman Adam Page versus Matt Hardy in the big money match. Coming up at Revolution on pay-per-view this Sunday night, March 7th. 
do not want to miss that. Colt Cabana charging in, diving elbow. Yeah, big drop. elbow, big elbow. Cabana using his size well. Levi Shapiro finding out the hard way here. Shapiro's getting bounced around here by the dark order. Good. Yeah, his head bouncing off that top turnbuckle. And Cabana <laughs> still not done. Setting Sh Shapiro into the corner for the trifecta. Evil Uno jumping back, elbow strike. Taz, I believe that this may be the first time that this combination of Dark Order members has teamed up. Yeah, you might be correct on that. And then Evil Uno with those chop Shapiro is just did you see one out. Yes. See Cabana did. He was he was scolding five. He gave him the, the little tisk tisk for uh, for grabbing Shapiro and bringing him upright. No, I'm sorry, I wasn't watching the guys in the apron. I was watching Evil Uno chopping the hell out of Mr. Shapiro. There's a lot of details if you're not uh, not paying attention to this. I'm watching uh, Cole Action, an expert analyst. You know this. I don't know if Chris Jordan's right there. He's my friend. Hello. Eli Shapiro gets the boot up, drops Evil Uno down. Fish drop there. Shapiro now has got to try to get over there to get one of his partners in. And Negative one imploring Evil Uno to make the tag. Angels comes in, elevates over the top of John Schuyler, takes down Shapiro. Shot to Ryzen, blocks him off the corner. Close lines here. John Schuyler swinging a miss. You can see some frustration there by John Schuyler. It's Alan Angels sidesteps Shapiro, drop toe hold, hung out to dry on the ropes. Col Col <laughs> just said, I believe this is going to suck. Yeah. Oh, and he was right. <laughs> If someone telling you that before you, you get squished. Angels elevated over the top. Rise! Oh man! Hard landing there. Alan Angels looking very impressive here, Tess. Yeah, throughout this whole flurry he has. And the backwards frog splash off the middle. Rob Shapiro breaks it up. Great job by Alan Angels. And Taz, tomorrow night, speaking of the Dark Order, we will see number 10 of the Dark Order taking on Platinum Max Caster in that qualifying match for the Face of the Revolution ladder match coming up on Sunday, March 7th. And that should be definitely a really, definitely a really good contest. 10 versus Caster. Oh, ho, 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 ho. big kick there by John Schuyler, and he made the tag out to Ryzen. Bringing Ryzen in the hard way up onto the shoulders of Colt Cabana. Cabana. Oh, oh my God. Just threw Ryzen at the outstretched knees of Evil Uno. And now the wing snapper. Uno has Ryzen up and flat lines him. Covers two, three. No winners of this match. Colt Boom Boom. Banner, Alan Five Angels and Evil Uno. Whatever negative one is out here leading up the Dark Order, they're even more motivated. Oh man, he's he's ripping the shirt off. Oh, I thought oh, he was. Oh, oh, so much. Now he's fucking rising. Evil Uno, man, so strong, so impressive. And you can see Angels and Cabana just admiring Uno's handiwork. And Taz, when you have somebody as fearsome as Evil Uno in your corner, uh, you know, you're almost forced to succeed. Absolutely. Keeps the pressure on. Good job right there by all three men of the Dark Horde. Super Kick Hunter! This is the story of Matt and Nick Jackson, seen through their eyes. Over the past 20 years, they have documented their tireless journey their triumphs, and their tribulations. And now they are ready to share their adventures with the world in their new book. One day, let's grow up and let's be professional wrestlers. This is the story of two brothers that became two loving fathers that went on to become the best tag team in professional wrestling today. This is the story of the Young Bucks killing the business. Young Bucks, we're killing the business. Platinum Max Caster will be in action tomorrow night in the face of the Revolution qualifying match, but here tonight he will face J.J. Garrett next on Dark.
the acclaim. Top of the chain, so I bet you know the name. Getting all the fans hey. in the chain. The acclaim. Yo. Running Yo. in the game and we're in our own lane. Yo. Yo. Hey. Hey. They wanna be hey, we are the acclaimed. Getting all the ladies. Hey, nice mullet. What is this, the 80s? <laughs> Yo. I'm killing in this game. You look like a broke Brian Pillman in this ring. Ah! You did it for the irony. Looking like a girl. Write it in your diary. Got you calling out Mayday. And I heard your name is short for JJ. The acclaim have arrived, and so has Anthony Agogo making his return to the broadcast booth. Thanks, uh, Excalibur. It's nice to be back. Big Max Cast is now going to do his thing. This contest is set for one fall in the 20-minute time limit. In the ring from Boone, Iowa, weighing 190 pounds, Chi-Chi Garrett. So I, I'd like to know how you get this gig, Anthony. You just come and go as you please with the announce desk. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll come in, I'll jump out, I'll go. How does that work, bro? Exactly I want to get your agent. Exactly. <laughs> maybe no, Woods. Maybe, maybe not. Woods. All right, maybe not. All right, maybe not. Taz, what if in the editing process of this show they put all these matches together? Then we just, yeah. Then we look like idiots. And we, well, it wouldn't be the last time. All folks. Talking about idiots. <laughs> What's JJ Gunnett's hair all about? It's horrible. But he went for a little high crotch and takedown and floats over to the head. But yeah, no, he's got the mullet thing going on. And I think that's back. I think the mullet's back, I think. I don't know. Pillman's got it going on, too. I don't know. Do you take fashion cues or tonsorial cues from uh, Brian Pillman Jr.? No. That's a, um, that's a COVID haircut. Got to do it yourself job. That is <laughs> COVID haircut. JJ Garrett and Platinum Max Caster squaring off. Caster, of course, will be a part of that qualifying match for the Face of the Revolution ladder match. Coming up at Revolution, he will be facing 10 tomorrow night on Dynamite, 8 7 Central on TMT. I'll tell you, Caster, very impressed with the tag team battle royal. Massive upside for Max Caster, big fan of his work. Oh, oh missed there. Missed J there on Garrett. JJ Garrett exploding out. Hit him with a bit of the area code shot, Taz. Oh, he sure did. Missed right there. Nice athleticism. Oh, but on his spear again. Garrett, great explosivity. I'll tell you, Excalibur, I think Max Caster might Whoa. make a great TNT oh. champion. Would you agree with that? Damn, that was gnarly. Beat the hell out of him. You think he'd make a great TNT champion? I think he would. I do, too. You, I Anyone's been to Darby Allen. That, that's, that's what I was going to say. Anybody that takes the belt off of Darby. Yes, right. As Caster has the arm of Garrett captured and wrenching back on that. But Anthony, a man that you know very well, already in that face of the revolution ladder match, Cody Rhodes. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be, he's got to be the favorite, right? He's got to be the favorite. Well, is he the favorite in everything, Cody? Like, is he like the favorite in life? Like, <laughs> I mean, he's the favorite. He's the golden boy, the American nightmare. He's the golden boy. He's the, he's the golden boy in the American nightmare, but he's, he's earned that reputation for his outstanding ability. Covered here by Caster. In the square circle. But I'm so, I mean, not doubting his, uh, his abilities. I agree with that, but yes, it's Calvin. Of the four competitors that we know in that matchup. <laughs> he's making me laugh, sorry. It's, yes. Co it's Cody Rhodes, Scorpio Sky, Penta El Cerro Miedo, and now Lance, Lance Archer. Archer. Yes. So, I mean, that, that's a pretty stacked deck, Anthony. Well, that, that's fireworks right there. Fireworks big right time, there. Big time. Back to the match, Max Caster. Um, he impresses me with his, he's a big dude, man. He's got to be, he what, 6'2", 6'3", 230 pounds. He's a big athletic dude. His father played in the NFL for the New York Jets, and you know, he's, so he comes from good stock as far as his genetics. I know Max well. Very good athlete. And uh, Caster, of course, with that, uh, that, that big football DNA, courtesy of his dad, but uh, Preston Vance, 10 of the Dark Order. Of course, a, a two-sport athlete. He played football as well as hockey. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, these, these guys, I guess, technically a three-sport athlete if you want to count professional wrestling. Sure. You should. And I do. And you should. How about that? Thanks, I just want to specify it's it's American football, not football football. Okay, listen. Are, you, are you in the UK <laughs> or America right but now? But I digress. 
Up hat. Uh, That's my wow. <laughs> Hold on. He's giving Ooh. you the business test. He sure is. Oh, oh, oh wow. I was not in the kidney. JJ Garrett eats a knee drop there. Another reason why I like uh, Max Caster because with all his ability, he's aggressive. Very intense, aggressive, and he, he's also, he'll talk smack, as you guys know. Going out here, cutting promos on you and burying guys in wraps. That shows confidence, man. And slap this guy in his yeah, rear end. He's, he's peculiar as well. Yes. This guy just punched Max in the head. Max got a short fuse, too. I mean, that's the thing with Caster. You know, he, he has fun and stuff, but he's got a, like, to your point, you know, Anthony, he's got a very big mean streak. And he also, I don't know if people can pick up, um, watching at home but we're here we've got the luxury of watching from a few a few yards away he talks smack during the match as well which he oh, gets yeah, yeah, inside yeah, yeah. Yeah, his, his opponent's yeah. head caster leaping up to the ropes he's got garrett all hooked up jj garrett knows he needs to get out of this situation and he does caster got dropped garrett oh beautiful moon salt i press. tell you whoever wins this face of the revolution uh, uh matchup I, I gotta tell you, they're gonna be, end up being the TNT champion by, by forfeit because Darby, after the street fight, it's gonna be Dunsky. You know what I mean? Done! That's right. Team Taz, Ricky Starks, and Brian Cage will take on Darby Allen and Sting in the street fight this coming Sunday, March 7th on pay per view. It's a Sunday, Excalibur. Make sure you, it's the first time ever done on a Sunday. Please let the people know it's on Sunday. We've never done it on Sunday, Excalibur, right? It is on Sunday. It is Revolution on pay-per-view or Fight TV internationally. Garrett, cover here. Didn't have uh, the yeah, weight distributed it, evenly. It was a very unique attempt at a jackknife cover. It wasn't there. It's, it's, Fight. Look at Bowens. Slid the boombox into the ring. Bryce. Well, <laughs> <laughs> He's been extremely impressive, J.J. Garrett, this um, tonight, hasn't he? Really impressive. Oh! The low blow there by Caster. Oh. And the brain buster follow-up. Platinum Max Caster. Caster's on the hop here. Let's see what he's got. He's headed up to the top. The mic drop across the chest of Garrett. One, two, three. He's going for the hand lick. Coming, there it is. Oh. The acclaimed <laughs> winner of the match. He's at Max Caster. It will be Platinum Max Caster versus number 10 of the Dark Order, Preston Vance, tomorrow night in the qualifying matchup for the face of the Revolution Ladder match. 8 7 Central on TNT and Dynamite. Let's take another look at how Platinum Max Caster ended the night. I mean, it was the low blow first, then the brain buster followed up by the mic drop. Big elbow, yeah, that big elbow mic drop. Preston Vance is gonna have his work cut out for him tomorrow night. He also plays the violin. What can't he do, Matt Caster? <laughs> it's actually Phil. <laughs> Big tag team match coming up right now on Dolph. The Hybrid 2, Jack Evans and Inhalico in action. This is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 396 pounds, Sean Dean and Carly Bravo. Taz, I know you're looking for an account. Will you set up for a captain? Uh, I am not looking for an account anymore. I, I like the captain, Sean Dean. I do like him. Will he be my, do my taxes? No, he will not. <laughs> captain Sean Dean and Carly Bravo returning to action here tonight on AEW Dark. They have looked impressive in the past. Still looking to score their first victory. And their opponents at a combined weight of 377 pounds, Jack Evans on Helico, the hybrid two. Anthony, you seem like a guy that's uh, been to a nightclub or two. Of, of dabbles, of dabbles. <laughs> what, on a scale of one to 10, the Angelico dance. 
what would you give it and you think he would he would stand out blend in or be the best dancer in the club well listen Excalibur you missed a massive, a massive trick there I also did dancing with the stars in the UK I know my way around I the ball. I know that. Hold on a second. You got my attention now. Hold on a second. Oh, Taz is really? pricked up. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no end to my talents. What so the hell can't you do? You are unbelievable. I only lasted for a couple of weeks. It wasn't that good. So Because you didn't do the Angelico dance. Because That's I did not do why. the Angelico. <laughs> Well, I want to remind everybody that coming up this Sunday night, March 7th on pay-per-view on Fight TV, it's AEW's Revolution with that great casino tag team royale with the winners getting a shot at the AEW World Tag Team Championship. Casino Tag Team Royale brought to you by AEW Casino, available on the Apple App Store and Google Play. I must say, Carly Bravo, he's uh, he's very new, he's very green, but he's very, very talented. He was one of Cody's campers yeah. in the Cody in, in the Nightmare Factory. I walked by him earlier, I said, hey, Carly, how you doing? You know what he said to me? What's up, bro? <laughs> yeah, you're right. He's very green, very comfortable. And I digress. Yeah, so. he's, uh, he's exuberant, shall we say. Yeah. He's, uh... So am I. <laughs> <laughs> and, here, and here I thought you were talking about the color of his pants. <laughs> He's, uh, he'd, he'd never walked into, um, he's still trying to know, still learning the ropes, as they say. It seems like he loves the ropes, he's very comfortable with them. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. He'd never walked into, uh, he'd never been in the wrestling school four months ago, now he's wrestling AEW Dark live here. Daily Space Jacksonville, and I'm, I'm impressed with him, with his, with his progression so quick. Well, he seems humble. <laughs> any more? Do we have any more that we're going to put him over on? I'm just, let me know, I'm, I'm ready for it. <laughs> And Elico takes him down. But for someone who's only got four months of his belt, to your point, Anthony, you know, he is impressive. That I will say for sure. Between the ropes, he is. Big leapfrog there by Angelico. Drop kick missed there by Carly Bravo. Angelico put on the brakes. All right, a bit of a stalemate here. Well, it's, that's Angelico being a veteran. He's gonna wait. He's not gonna he's not gonna rush into nothing. He's he wants to see what uh, young Mr. Bravo was going to do. And Bravo said, well, you know what, I'll tag out because the captain said tag me, which was smart by Sean Dean, the captain. So if we call soccer soccer, but you call it football, mm. and we call Dancing with the Stars Dancing with the Stars, what do you call it? We call it Strictly Come Dancing, actually. Strictly Come Dancing. Strictly. It's, it's the biggest TV show in the UK. Hey. You just asked Paul Hollywood that. Roll through here. Evans. Get up to the arm. The big bake off guy, Taz. Love bake offs. Jack Evans. <laughs> Troll the wrist out of this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sean Dean. I did a slow motion cartwheel there. Oh, oh, that was cool. Oh, that was <laughs> nice sweep right there by Sean Dean. I like that. Great counter by the captain. That was pretty cool. Sean Dean showing up, Jack Evans. That's, that's hard to do, man. Deep arm dragging. Almost tossed him over the top. Oh! <laughs> nice kick. quick kick. Kick to the shit. Oh, oh that was a little, little bit of mustard on that one by the captain. Carly Bravo tags in. Double Irish whip into the ropes. Oh, drop kick there. Strictly come drop kicking as Carly Bravo. Strictly come drop kick. He Here. waited too long to go for the cover there. He should have, I think that's his inexperience. A, a wise man would have got down and covered him straight away. He wasted half a second there, in my humble opinion. Oh, you're not wrong. He did. Uh, he did. Again, that, that is the experience, but there are some people that are, are uh, inexperienced that would do that a little quicker, but maybe because in a tag situation, he wasn't sure what Sean Dean wanted to do if he was going to tag in or whatnot or what that. And you saw Angelico with the referee's back turn digging his fingers into the eyes of Carly Bravo. He telegraphed that right hand there. Well, but I, I think he was baiting Sean Dean into the ring to allow Evans Ooh. to set him up for that PK. Hooks the far leg, does Angelico. That's a penalty kick, P guys. Uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with the PK, my friend. I know more about that than you know. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> God, I'd like to hear more. There's really not much. Okay. <laughs> just built it up from home. I see. Now Angelico's going to go. Uh, That's so unlike you, Taz. No, no. Making a mountain out of a molehill. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no. Carly Bravo right hands to the midsection of Angelico. Angelico knee strike cut off Carly Bravo's momentum. Ooh. Missed the big. That would have been a knockout shot. 
Carly Bravo avoids contact, makes the tag out to Sean Dean, swinging a miss. Dean, elbow strike, takes down Angelico. Angelico gets taken down a second time. A swing and a miss. Angelico really rattled here. Sean Dean taking advantage. Give him the deal, Sean Dean. Ooh. Hey, there's the deal. There's nowhere to go when you're in that corner like that. You get drop kick. TH2 is having a lot of trouble with Carly Bravo and Sean Dean right here tonight. Sean Dean rings the arm out. The salute, the DDT. And Helico planted Dean covers to no. Well, you know what? Good job on the cover, didn't get the win, but his forces and Helico to kick out, exert more energy. I don't know if there's a smart tag in Carly Bravo because Bravo's grabbing at his ribs. He might not be 100% here. Oh, and Helico. Oh, just. Oh! Wow! One, two, no, Evans! How about that tough match against Matt Hardy and Hangman that TH2 had last week? You know, and then they're coming off of that, so, but right now they're looking okay. Well, yeah. for a second they were. They were, but I mean, remember, they've, uh, oh, oh. they seem to be on Matt Hardy's payroll. He offered him uh, $3,700 to attack Hangman Adam Page. And, oh, Jack Evans, the big corkscrew kick. And Helico, oh, that kick from the ground. Got caught right in the head there. TH2 could be looking to return to the pay window. Carly Bravo gets swept out. I'll tell you, what Hangman did to Matt Hardy did not show a lot of integrity of that, I'll tell you. Oh, look at this. And Helico's got him locked up. The Ooh. Navarro death roll. He's cranking back. And Carly Bravo forced to tap out. The winners of this match. The hybrid two. They get paid by Matt Hardy. They get paid the winner's share of the purse. TH2 victorious here tonight. Well, they can do it all sorts of ways, and Helico right here, finish it off with that strong leg, ankle lock with the knee bar attached. And that, that Navarro death roll is so dangerous sure. because and Helico puts so much initial torque into it, and then the follow-up. TH2 victorious here tonight. Orange Cassidy will team up with Chuck Taylor at Revolution to take on Kip Sabian and Miro, but tonight, Orange is in singles action next here on Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from wherever, weighing whatever, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. These two men, Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor, will be in action this Sunday night at Revolution when they take on Miro and Kip Sabian. Kip and Miro still angry about Orange disrupting the wedding of Kip and Penelope Ford. And from Sparta, New Jersey, weighing 235 pounds, Steven Stetson. Oh, well, you know, Orange Cassidy popped out of the cake. I mean, it's very disrespectful at, at Penelope's wedding. And Kip, you know, the best man was pissed. Disrupted the whole thing. Taz, Sp what? Sparta, New Jersey. A lot of cowboys. Known around the world as cattle country. There's a plethora of tumbleweed throughout that part of Jersey. Oh, he's moseying forward. Who's he? Uh, well, both actually. I say Stetson now. Uh, whoa. Ah, yippee Kaye Mose. <laughs> you know the rest, right? I, I know. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, negative one still in earshot, so. <laughs> Single leg uh, sweep there. <laughs> oh, Cassidy. Well, Cassidy, yeah, he, he's got some long leg steps, and I mean, he's going for a version of look like a scorpion deathlock. But you never know what he's doing. A lot of submissions does. Oh, wait, Orange Cassidy, what's he got here? He's going to get some new pants, bro. He really got to get some. He, he don't care. Yeah, that's not just sloth. He's a uh, little. He's crazy, man. <laughs> I can't relate to many people anywhere, but Orange Cassidy, I can. Something about him I like. He's got him all tied up. Yeah, refusing to relinquish the hold. And, uh, oh. <laughs> I kind of like the cowboy half for Orange. Stetson's not happy about this. Oh, he kicked the hat. 
Oh. <laughs> He's a crazy bastard. He's the man. Oh, man. Oh. Watch, Cat. Oh, look at this, Cassidy. He's got Stetson up. He was thinking beach break, but instead gets sent into the rope. Stetson. Oh, high boot. Knocked the sunglasses orange Cassidy into the fifth row. Yeah, he got, he got caught right there, Cassidy did. Steven Stetson. And driving the point of his elbow into the face of Orange Cassidy. Stetson's a big man. Big robo man right here. Come on, Orange. What you got now? Stetson, yeah, continuing to uh to bark at Orange Cassidy. And Stetson. He's wasting, he's wasting a lot of time. He's really far away from his opponent, which is probably not a smart thing. Well, it worked, though. Charging into the corner. Ducks under the contact. Orange punch! Wow. And he's got him set up on the shoulders. Beach break! One, two, three. Here's your winner, Ashley Squeeze. Orange Cassidy. Taz Orange Cassidy with a lot of momentum heading into Revolution this Sunday night. But let's take a look at the most important moment of this matchup here. Orange Cassidy was, well, he's, he's victorious. Referee Bryce Remsburg raises his hand. It was the orange punch that rocks Stetson. And then the beach break. It will be Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy versus Miro and Kip Sabian this Sunday night on Pay-Per-View. We didn't even really get to touch on you and Sean Spears. How's your back? It's a little bit sore. Oh my God. <laughs> What's up? I want to talk about wrestling with the week. Whatever we have interest in, we're going to chop it up. Did you get the PS5? Ugh. I'm over here all weekend playing PS4 like a heathen. <laughs> Scorpio Sky and myself, James Willems, we got distracted. We're gonna be talking about video games. We're gonna be talking about pop culture. Have you seen the New York Subway Rat Man? What? <laughs> We're gonna be recapping AEW. It's the most exciting part of the show. We're basically gonna be talking about the week. We got a lot to get into, man. It's also what the people wanna see. <laughs> oh my God. Voila. This is progress. Scorpio Sky, James Willems, Wrestling with the Week. Wrestling with the Week. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe now. Woo! It's beautiful. I love it. Chuck Taylor goes one on one against VSK. Now with the, now with the, now with the best friends. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Murray, Kentucky, weighing 217 pounds, the Kentucky gentleman, Chuck Taylor. For the bluegrass. Remember the bluegrass conversation? Bluegrass state. I know that. A rare singles appearance here by the Kentucky gentleman, Chuck Taylor. Chuck, I like his shirt. Chuck's old business. Magnum I Chuck Taylor. <laughs> His opponent from Massapequa, New York, weighing 190 pounds, VSK. VSK squaring off the Kentucky gentleman Chuck Taylor here. Chuck Taylor, of course, will team up with Orange Cassidy to take on Kip Sabian and Miro this Sunday night, March 7th, at Revolution on pay per view. And of course, the reason it will be Chuck and Orange Cassidy is because Miro tore the peck of Trent. Yeah, it's a tough injury that Trent is recovering from. That takes time. It does take a good amount of time. VSK was wearing those uh, Islander colors. Oh, really, Taz? I thought Out they were hockey. New York Mets colors. It's actually the same colors, kind of. But I got mean, a little, little bit of teal. A little bit of navy. All right, and teal and navy. So you, send the, you send the Islanders to C&D? No, I'm friends with them. Please, I'm an Islander fan, dude. VSK, oh, man could pick up a huge upset victory yeah. here. The body slam, the frog splash, just a two count. Chuck Taylor kicked out. Well, VSK knows what he's doing in this ring. Knows what he's doing. He's a native of Massapequa, New York. South Shore, Long Island, a county called Nassau. Not far from Nassau. Oh, Coliseum. the soul food just rocked the jaw of VSK. Chuck Taylor, high boot. 
the, if you don't care about the South Shore. All right. I'm more of a North Shore. More of a Fire Island guy. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> I'm a highfalutin. Do a lot of, lot of research into Lyme disease. <laughs> Chuck Taylor. Brain Mustard. Cover here. One, two. You got a lot of deer on fire. Jeez. <laughs> Oh. People interact with the deer, they feed them by hand. Yes. They get Lyme disease. Fire Island don't have much deer. I'm just letting you know that. But anyway, with the few deer they do have, have Chuck Lyme Taylor disease. spent some time on Long Island, I believe. I know Trent's from there, but didn't Chuck? I guess not. <laughs> Where are you going? I could have sworn that Chuck lived on Long Island at some point. No, we're talking about Long Island. It's a Long Island theme here. No, he lives in Philadelphia, which is, I guess, close to Long Island. No, back in the day. No. VSK is from Long Island. He's having a hard time right now. Crazy Chuck. Look at his face. Yeah, that was the face he made when you suggested that he lived on Long Island. <laughs> I think I'm from Philly and Kentucky. <laughs> Chuck Taylor bringing VSK up to his feet. But VSK, some body shots there to Chuck Taylor. Nice forearm, too, by the VSK. Chuck, the knee to the midsection, cutting him off, looking for soul food. No, nope, VSK blocked it. He's a very skilled kicker, as Chuck Taylor just found out. Nothing for that. Yeah. Oh, no. Nothing. I got nothing. VSK elevated up and over the top. Rope shoulder to the midsection. VSK comes in swinging. DDT. Chuck Taylor cleared out. He's a bit rattled. And VSK. Tope Suicida. Got all of that right now. And, and VSK not wasting any time. Get back in there now, VSK. Returning Chuck into the ring. VSK charging in. Elevating knee strike by Chuck Taylor. Chuck Taylor plants VSK down. And Chuck E.T. brings him up. He's done the deal. One, two, no! Nobody kicks out of the oh. Falcon Arrow. Wow. VSK. I can't believe it, Chuck. <laughs> Say it ain't so. Chuck E.T. obviously been doing a lot of bicep and tricep work in the gym. <laughs> he sets VSK up on the top rope. Uh oh. Over the shoulder. Oh, he's looking for awful waffle. VSK escapes to. No, he had an upset in the making right there, Tess. So fooled off of Waffle. He's got all sorts of crazy names. I love it. <laughs> oh, and that is. That was a short range snap pile driver. And Chuck Taylor. Oh my God, another one? No, no, big full one. Oh, jumping pile driver by the Kentucky gentleman. One, two, three. I respect you, key locked the wrist. No need. <laughs> no winner of this match. Chuck Taylor. You get a, a double dose of pile drivers in some fashion. That's a, that's a tough night at the office. Chucky T with the Duke. Look at this. First, the short range pile driver. That's nasty. And then the jumping pile driver, the center of the ring. Taz, I know Miro has a fearsome reputation. I know how skilled Kip Sabian is. Sure. But I think Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy are more than up to the task this Sunday night at Revolution on pay-per-view. You might be right, they got that mojo back here. Number 10 of the Dark Order, Preston Vance in singles competition. And I fear we may have a special guest joining us in the booth. Join the Dark Order. The following contest is set for one fall. With a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the keep. Weighing 240 pounds. Dark Order number 10. Taz, can I tell you something? Yes, sir. It's 1.30 in the morning. I got my top button undone. I got my tie loose. And I am in no mood. Join no mood! Oh! No what? mood to be bullied by a nine year old kid. Well, he's got the shoes off, negative one, and the shirts off, and he's going to join us at the booth. He hates your guts. And his opponent from Buffalo, New York, weighing 205 pounds, Dan Joseph. There All he comes. Day. All freaking. Hey, negative one, great to see you, man. Negative one. Great to see you, Glass. Always glad to have hey, you back in the booth. Shut up. Taz, <laughs> you can talk. Yes, it's good to see you, man. You Listen, too. I pointed out last week, negative one, 
that you have the new hood, a new mask. Yeah. I like it, man. I really yeah. dig it. It's cool. And Preston Ten Vance has a new mask. But yes. Who cares about this guy? That's Daniel Joseph making his single. Hey, shut up. I don't, when I tell you to speak, you speak. See, so and you, I, don't, I don't. I don't tell you to speak. And I gotta tell you this. You know, negative one, you have the Dark Order really motivated. They're really kicking butt here tonight. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. I ripped my shirt off in the last match. So to end your shoes. Yeah. Sir, can I can I no. promote Preston Vance's can't. match tomorrow night on Dynamite? You Kinda can't has even to. talk. You don't want people wow. to watch him wrestle on Dynamite tomorrow? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, can I promote it then? No, shut up. Okay. Well, Taz can promote it. Yes, well, that's, yeah, well, Excalibur, that's kind of his job, and then I'd have to get paid more money. That's how this works. You know what I mean, negative one. So we gotta have to let him do it. Just let him say it, bro. Fine. Okay. Preston Vance, number 10, will be competing against Platinum Max Caster tomorrow night on Dynamite 8 7 Central on TNT. It will be a qualifying matchup for the face of the Revolution ladder match. Coming Sorry. up. Sorry. Sorry, Taz. Uh, it's all good, bro. I, yeah, I had to tell him to. Daniel Joseph returned to the ring there by Preston don't, Vance. Don't, don't talk about him. Oh! Hey! Yeah! yeah. Boom! <laughs> Daniel Joseph being brought to the center of the ring. Vance mm. hoists him up on the shoulders. Joseph escapes out the oh. back. Shut up, Excalibur. So I have to ask you, David, one in the ladder match at Revolution. Listen, it, 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 it's going to be a tough match. You got Lance Archer, this thing, Cody Rhodes, Penta, Scorpio Sky. You know, who do you want to see mostly face your guy, Ten? Yes, sir. He will. He won't have any trouble. He will be anyone in his right. way. Now I believe you. No and matter who it is. Yeah. In this ladder. Oh! <laughs> in the yeah. ladder match. Ugh. In the ladder match. Yeah, there it is. The winner of that ladder match will get a shot at Darby Allen in the TNT yeah. Championship. He's gonna win it. And oh! that could be Preston Vance, the next oh, TNT hi. champion. One, two, three. The winner of this match. Well, nice to join us, buddy. Number 10. All right, dude, see you later, bud. I'm so sick of that kid. I know you showed him, buddy. You really did. You didn't say nothing. You said you were going to yell at him and you didn't do anything with him. That's all right. I understand that. You see negative one right here. Look at the strength and power in that spine buster. And then the power again on display as he hoisted Daniel Joseph up off the canvas and drove him down. It'll be Vance versus Caster tomorrow night in the qualifying match for the face of the Revolution ladder match coming up on Sunday. March 7th on pay-per-view. Big time tag team matchup here as SCU's Frankie Kazarian and Christopher Daniels join forces once again to take on the brothers, Matt and Mike Seidel. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 335 pounds, Matt and Mike Seidel. The team of Matt and Mike Seidel recently made their AEW debuts on Dynamite a couple weeks back. They had the misfortune of facing up with a very motivated, a very mean FTR. Yeah, that's a tough team to compete against. Seidel's though, uh, very impressive, FCU. this brother unit. And their opponents from Southern California at a combined weight of 425 pounds, the fallen angel Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, yes, see you. As you saw the record at the bottom of the screen, an impressive 3-0 this year. Good enough to earn SCU a number four ranking in the tag team division, it seems like the pressure that Daniels and Kazarian have put on themselves and paid off. Oh, absolutely. I was just thinking the same thing as you were saying that. You know, that, that pressure that Kazarian put on him and his partner, on him on CD, and it's definitely paying off. And sometimes you have to do that, especially when you're bringing, bringing veterans like these two teams. You know, and uh, you know, your opponents can kind of scout you pretty simply. There's a lot of tape on you. 
all the years of competing, you put some pressure on yourself, but it's high, it's high risk. You know, they lose, they're done. Matt Seidel electing to start things off for his team. Frank Kazarian for SCU. Good show of respect. A lot of history between Seidel and Christopher, Matt Seidel, I should say, and Christopher Daniels. Frankie Kazarian as well, but more so with Christopher Daniels. Matt Seidel and CD, of course, home tag team championship mm. together. And Frank Kazarian looking, oh, looking for the ankle pick there, but. Yeah, Matt, well, you see Seidel right getting his body away from, from Kaz. Frankie Kazarian building up a little bit of momentum and the sure-footed Matt Seidel landing on his feet on the outside. I haven't seen someone do that in a long time. That's an old school way to get out of a hold and it worked by Kazarian. Kazarian trained up in the Boston area by the uh, legendary Killer Kowalski. And then uh, returned home to Southern California where it's where, where I first met him in, uh, I believe, 2000. And uh, seen Frankie Kazarian compete at just about all stages of his career. And Taz, I mean, he's, oh, look at this Seidel. Two, just the two count for the crucifix. Yeah, good job by Seidel. He's so quick and just, and smart, smart time to train, uh, tag his brother, and I should say. And that's exactly what Matt did, tagging Mike. Mike Seidel, diving foot stops in the midsection. A little flying mare right there, a little different than the snap man when you go to the side, it's a flying mare. Standing moonsault press, Matt, Mike Seidel, just the two count there. And Taz, you've also seen uh, Daniels Kazarian and, and sure. Matt Seidel at, 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 at many stages of their, their career. Yep. I think, I mean, I don't want to say they've looked their best, but I mean, they look close to it, if not at the oh. peak. Yeah, I agree with you, Excalibur, because a lot of these athletes, as they get more seasoned in the industry all the years and decades they're, they're competing and being a, a, a successful professional wrestler worldwide and whatnot, they keep themselves in fine fickle, in the best shape you could be in to compete with these, these younger athletes that are on these rosters, like yeah. here in AEW. Well, you have like a, oh, that great leg lariat there by Christopher Daniels. I mean, a team like the, the number five ranked top flight here is Daniels. Covers, uh, you know, flight, yeah. yeah, I mean, they succeed almost on pure athleticism where a, a little more thoughtful, a little more strategic approach from SCU. Yeah. Right, obviously, you know, big, obviously big experience difference, but no, I get your drift for sure. Daniels now. Sending Mike Seidel into the ropes. Mike Seidel, though, goes around, lands behind CD and hits him with a huge drop kick. That, that clicking sound you heard was the jaw of Christopher Daniels coming together that could be very disorienting and so can a drop wow. kick like that to the side of the head well the drop toe hold was so fast and then the drop kick to the side of the head was even faster can't defend yourself when that happens Christopher Daniels being brought up to his feet almost like a northern lights bomb there from Matt Seidel but Daniels able to weather the storm and kick out see Seidel smart oh, those gonna settle down right there I would, I would think that was a smart thing to do but we're in a tag match, getting his brother in there, wants to double up on, on Daniels, maybe. Christopher Daniels in, uh, in a bit of a bad way here. As Mike Seidel trying, perhaps for a vertical suplex, but Daniels able to anticipate it. Mike Seidel lands behind, back elbow. That's all it took. That little bit of an opportunity there for Daniels to make the tag. But Frank Kazarian just Walking into some blistering strikes from Mike Seidel. Yeah, getting popped by Mike. Whoa, went for a big punch, but hold, up, hold on to those ropes did Cass. Quick tag out. I'm not sure if Mike Seidel noticed it. it was low high. Low sweep and a flying clothesline. That was nice. Christopher Daniels threw his entire body weight into that. So, I mean, not only is it the contact from the Lariat Taz, but it's, it's Daniels the follow through driving Mike Seidel down to the canvas. Like a total elimination, but not. Yeah. <laughs> Big elbow drop as Daniels stepped through. Just the two count, though. Matt Seidel trying to call some plays, trying to get his brother back into this game. Yeah, you don't want to end up uh, with both Daniels and Kazarian working over. That's what Mike's, Mike's got going on right now. Flipping neckbreaker there by Kazarian. Having a little fun. But that, yeah, might have cost him, Taz. Yeah, that little hesitation taking the rubber band that Mike had. Mike likes rubber bands, by the way. He's always flipping around well, at people. Keeps, keeps his hair back. Right, right, right. I know, I used him too. Mike Seidel, that was the yoga monster. He is. Well, he's at the mat, he's, he's the mat out. Yeah. Should be Matt, yeah. well, his brother's Matt. He can't be Matt Seidel, he's Mike Seidel. Oh! He is teeing off on the chest of Frankie Kazarian here, backing him to the ropes. Irish whip reversed by Kazarian. 
Hip toss blocked, swing and a miss. German suplex with the bridge. No. Stacked him up pretty good with that bridge, did Kazarian, but not enough. Mike with that flexibility, able to prevent getting pinned. That side L, like a little, little bit of desperation there. He saw his brother getting pinned. Kazarian leapfrog over the top. And now SCU, their trademark tag team offense. One, two, no! It just shows the teamwork, the chemistry, the timing of Daniels and Kazarian, all the years and the success that SCU has had. It just shows right there in that series. Yeah, and that's that's really an important part of a, of a highly efficient tag team is the is the chemistry and the the anticipation of what what your partner is going to do. Oh, a big part of that success, X Calvin. You're right. Mike Seidel tried to elevate over the top. He's hanging on and comes through into that DDT. Strong DDT. He's got to try and get his brother in this match now. Christopher Daniels was trying hard to pull Mike Seidel out of the corner. And Mike Seidel finally did come out, but only when he's able to turn the momentum around on CD. But wow. That was some shot. Matt's on fire. Matt Seidel, step up, Rana. Frankie Kazarian, a little unsteady on his feet. Mike, or Matt Seidel comes through with the arm drag and the leg lariat from Matt Seidel. Stop Kazarian in his tracks. Very close right there. Tough though, tough to get a pin like that. Even though it's fast firing off, it's tough to get a pin on a guy like Kazarian. After several moves, he's more than that, I think. It's for Daniels being beckoned in by yeah. Frankie Kazarian, the slice and jawbreaker combination. The standing Mariposa, one, two, no. Taz for as talented as Mike and Matt Seidel are, this would have to be something of an upset if they were to pick up the victory on SCU. You might be right about that, and, we, and that'd be it. Uh, SCU be kaput, they'd be done. Double rushing leg sweep here by the Seidel brothers. And get that leg hook. Matt kept the leg hook. and. We've seen him in the past employ those brutal submission techniques. And he is trying to get Frankie Kazarian to submit right here. He's trying to get that uh, Cobra clutch locked in. You don't have it all the way in, but the half Nelson's not all the way in. And that, you know, that, that when you don't have that half, oh. and, oh, here we go, stack him up with a pin. Two, no. I mean, he, he stacked him up, but he also, it was uh, it was body to body contact. Hey, I'll tell you, back in the day, with my show, the Taz Mission, I had, I lost the match the same way that Kazarian almost won that match. <laughs> Mike Seidel comes in, went for the roundhouse kick. Big swing and a miss by Frankie Kazarian. Step up, Benzi Carey. Frankie Kazarian's momentum carried him through. No, just the two count, though. You know, I didn't lose much, brother. You know, no, I know. No. This is. A back and forth matchup here. Yeah, now Mike, what's Mike gonna do here with Kazarian? Well, maybe not. Frankie Kazarian bringing Mike Seidel in the hard way with the cutter. One, two, no! Matt Seidel breaking things up just in the nick of time. Oh! That running knee, that high knee strike, rising knee strike, I should say. Roundhouse staggers Daniels back. SCU in the center of the ring. Wow, did you see that? Kazarian protected his partner. And he blocked. Oh! Over the top. Watch out. Mike Seidel rolls up Kazarian. Christopher Daniels brings up Mike Seidel. Tombstone here, pile driver. And now looking for the best Meltzer ever. Cover, one, two, three. You. Taz, I know SCU put that pressure on themselves, but they are looking in peak form here. They just keep on winning. Uh, they have no choice. They want to keep teaming, but yeah, they've been on a roll, man, big time. You see right here from the Tombstone, the best Tombstone ever into the, well, you could say the name, the best, what's it, the best, the, 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 the BME. BME. As SCU keeping up with the acronyms, they got the WIN. 
That's actually a word, not an actor. Named after my old friend, Doug Melson. <laughs> Well, thank you everyone for joining us here tonight on AEW Dark. Tomorrow night, 8, 7 central on TNT. It will be AEW Dynamite. We have a great night of...